bill of balance with a tiny disclaimer. And here it is. Your fatuities leave me absolutely breathless. But please, don't hold back. What you don't know won't hurt you, but it gives the rest of us a lot of chuckles. Your scholarly pretensions are often snickered at, but I fully respect your right, your absolute right, to mumble your interpretation of verbal gymnastics and mental pyrotechnics. Now, my own observations, such as hands across the border meet in a clammy grasp, do not necessarily reflect the views of my beloved pavement ladies on El Cajon Boulevard, now strutting their stuff enticingly, flaunting their incredible blandishments, our heavily armed guards, or the man who furnished my house in Rococo decadence. End of official balance disclaimer with a well-ordered mind who yearns to continue into infinitude, exposure to which gives you total self-reliance and increases your vital essence a thousandfold. Bill Balance, feeling a little philosophical as a result of compulsive reading, concluding this, that creativity is to our information age what ore was to the industrial age. And now, with that under our belts, let's move in and bring center stage a caller whose first name is... Carol. How old are you, Carol? Twenty-seven. What's the name of the rat you struggle to win back? <laughs> Barry. Barry? Yes. I've never known a single Barry who wasn't a creep. <laughs> not not one. <laughs> Tell me, how old... You didn't make the colossal blunder of marrying simple Barry, did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> too late now, kid. It's really too late. I'm I'm going to have the baby pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me about how you had to struggle to win his head and his uh, head and hands, including his warts. Well, uh, I won him back. I'd say with love and just tender, loving care. Yeah. Um. He he had a, he was he's from Colorado, yeah. and he had a girlfriend back there, yeah, and yeah. Uh, we had been going together for quite some time. But he just got the notion he thought he'd move back to Colorado and pick he... up with his girlfriend wherever they had left off. Yeah. Oh, boy, I bet your little heart capsized in your concave chest, didn't it? Right. Well, we had been out to um, some friends for, you know, a party. Yeah. And so he'd been trying to pick a fight with me all evening. I mean, you know, and I'm just not one, you know, I'll give in, you know, let him have his way and everything, and I don't fight back. So I had just had, I just, was disgusted, and I just said, okay, you know, uh, and we both had, you know, a little bit, especially him, and had quite a bit to drink. He was getting snockered and pugilistic and belligerent. <laughs> right, he, exactly. A mean drunk. He's one of those mean drunks. Yes, he is. Okay. <laughs> so, at any rate, well, he brought me back to my apartment, and uh, anyway, I said, well, let's sit down and talk about it, because I was starting to really feel bad. And he says, no, no, this is it. I'm leaving you. I never want to see you again. It's strange how we men deliberately pick a fight, and the woman knows what we're up to, you know. Right. Because when we want to phase out a doll, we try to make her to blame by picking a fight with her. <laughs> you ought to see all the guilty looks on guys' faces here. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, at any rate, so I began to cry, and I was just sobbing, and he just left and slammed the door. Oh, boy. So we had my roommates, and I had a studio apartment. So I was upstairs, and I was, you know, crying. I opened my window, and I said, oh, come on back, come back. And he just kept walking. Wait, you leaned out of the window? <laughs> Uh, with the with the well, tears. The was on, but I was just about it. <laughs> I would have probably. And you stood there with a lamp behind you, so you'd be silhouetted in the window dramatically, right? Yes, it was very dramatic. You Nobody know, could resist fine. that. Yeah. So at any rate, he drove away, and uh, we lived just like one place from the corner, and he had to make a right turn on the corner. There was a gas station right on the corner, yeah. and our apartment building was next to it. So I went to my uh, roommate's bedroom window to watch him drive away. And yeah. as I watched him turn the corner, he ran over a lamp post with huh. a great big, you know, uh, tall whip. You mean he <laughs> ran... He made a horseshoe out of his car. You mean he ran into it? Yes, yeah. right. I mean, yeah. he just ran right into it. Shows that he was thinking about you all the time. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know what was the matter with him or why he did it. That you know, I was just very frightened. I saw all these wires snapping and falling down and everything. <laughs> and you know, and all you know, and the horn had stuck and everything. All I could think of, that, you know, <laughs> killed himself or something. Well, wait, did you race out there in your winter jammies? No, I I still have my clothes on. I just you know, we, he had just brought me home. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. So at any rate, so I go tearing down the stairs and I ran down the street and got over there. Yeah. And uh so he was just coming too about that time. Yeah. So at any rate, well I decided, well I'm gonna really play it cool. Wait, did you cradle him in your tiny, tender, compassionate arms? Well, I was just trying to get him out of the car because I was afraid the car was gonna catch on fire or yeah. something. He was groaning there and bleeding and still still sort of semi conscious. Right. Well the only thing he kept was his tongue, which was beautiful because he couldn't talk. <laughs> yeah, or kiss. Yeah, oh. go ahead. So at any rate, will we um well, he didn't want to go to the hospital in an ambulance or whatever. So the police finally talked him into letting me take him. So I took him in my car. And then uh, after he got his treatment and so forth, well, I brought him back to my place because I live near the hospital. Yeah, little Miss little Miss Florence Nightingale, the, right. the friendly well, see, neighbor. I thought that I would just, you know, I would just be really cool. I wasn't, yeah. uh, you know, I just thought I would take good care of him. I wasn't going to, you know, uh, even talk about him going back with me or, yeah. or anything. I just forget the whole incident, but I was just I was very cool to him, although I you know, I did take, you know, really good care of him. You were kind of cool and alert and aloof like a nurse, uh, in the presence of a terminal <laughs> illness. Yeah, yeah well okay. that's what his mother said. <laughs> Oh, her. What was his mother doing there, hovering around? Well, she wasn't there. That's. I had to call her and tell her that he was. Uh, yeah. You know what had happened to him. In other words, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you have the upper hand. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And he Beautiful. he had to depend on me for everything. Yeah. To, uh, you know, notify the people he worked with, yeah. and in fact, he was driving his company car mm. when he did oh. that. Yeah, he would. Right. <laughs> Guys like that are always driving company cars. <laughs> 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 okay, so he finally it dawned on him suddenly, simple-minded Barry, that he is so dependent upon you, the immortal Carol, there's nothing to do but marry you and have you look after him the rest of his life. Right, well, he decided he better not ever try to run away from me again. He figured he might die the next time. <laughs> ah, simply to preserve his life and his tottering sanity, he decided he'd better marry Carol. Right. How long ago did this happen, honey? Uh, let's see, the accident and that whole... The little thing happened about three years ago. Yeah. And then we've been married about, uh, well, it was two years last November. Are you fairly happy, or is it still kind of touch and go? Oh, no, no. We're the, real happy now. Has he ever gone back to Colorado just to see if he still loves that other doll? Well, the, when he went back there, the first time he went back there after that accident, I went with him, and it was for his <laughs> high school graduation. <laughs> you sh class reunion. I you think. chaperoned the poor devil. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to let him go all by himself. Uh, did you see the other woman? No, I oh, didn't. That's too bad because... A lot of others. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing delights a wife more than to look uh, at the man's, at her husband's former girlfriend who has put on weight. Yes. Yeah. Okay, honey, thanks for calling, Carol. Okay, Bill, I really love your show. I've been listening to you for, oh, three years now. You've Thank you for being a pioneer listener. <laughs> Okay. Goodbye, darling. Bye-bye. Hey, I just had an idea. Develop a commanding presence. Be heard on Bill Balance Talk, but only if you're calling out of the name of... Diane. Diane? Uh-huh. How old are you? Eighteen. Gee, a young kid of eighteen. <laughs> uh, uh, what's the name of the man, the pimply adolescent in your life? Robert. How old a ma boy is he? Twenty-five. Okay. Uh, I hope you didn't make the colossal blunder of marrying. No, him. I didn't. I almost didn't. <clears throat> yeah, tell me about what extreme lengths you went to win this this pipsqueak Robert back. Well, it started about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, my father died, and he left me a lot of money. How much? How much? Uh, Ten thousand. Wow, that's like being endowed for a lifetime. <laughs> and I foolishly spent it on this guy. Mm -hmm. I bought him a. Everything he wanted, just about clothes, oh, car. What, what a disaster! <laughs> yeah. And the minute he had he'd gone all through your vast inheritance, he told you to kiss off. I'll bet. Well, he got married. <laughs> he got married. He used your inheritance as his dowry. Yeah, but uh, I think oh. he had to get married. See, uh, after well, after I was with him, 
I took off for about, I was gone about six months. Where did you go, Diane? Uh, San Francisco. I have an aunt that lives over there. Oh, did, wait a minute. Was this after or before you blew your money on this pipsqueak? After. Yeah. I dumped him. Oh, you dumped him? Are you sure you did? Yes, I got tired of him. Yeah, you got tired of him uh, spending your money. Yeah, that's true. Did you ever meet his aged bride? Uh, yeah, I know her now. But she knows me, too. Uh, how did you kids get together after squabbling over the favors of the same guy, this this nincompoop Robert? Well, uh, he's married now, and he's taking me out. See, he wants to leave his wife, but she won't give him a divorce. And uh, she's seen us together. Is he? Wait a minute. You've taken him back after he spent your ten thou? <laughs> what a grunt head. No, I, well, I'm back now, and, uh... Well, I guess he looked me up, and we're going out now together. Yeah, his first question was, have you inherited any more money? Well, I still have some left. <laughs> You've got a few bucks left. Yeah. How, how much do you have left? Uh, about 5000 Don't let him get his hooks on that now, Diane. <laughs> Will you promise, Bill? Oh, I don't know about that. Why do you... You don't have to buy your way into guys' hearts. No. Well, sure. I, I want to protect my girls against these sharpshooters. I tell you what... Let me look after your $5,000. <laughs> I'll, I'll invest it for you. I'll diversify your, your pulsating portfolio. How'll that be? <laughs> yeah, don't let this guy have your money, Diane. Seriously, put it in the bank. Well, he's spending his money on me now. Yeah, up to 4 and $5 a week. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want you to blow your loot on this crumb, honey. No, the tables have turned now. Yeah, the worm has turned, and he didn't even put an arm out. <laughs> okay, honey, thanks for calling. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, cutie. You know, there's nothing wrong with the younger generation that the older generation hasn't already outgrown. Let's see if that impresses a caller. First name is? Doris, we're 27. Doris, my darling. <laughs> oh, Bill, I'm so nervous. Why should you be afraid only a couple of hundred million people are listening? I know, and I've told so few people this story. Well, I tell you what. I'm going to throw a magic hex on you, over you, and around you so that no one except Bill will hear you, okay? Here comes my hex. There. Oh, boy, did that help. Yeah, of course. Now you can reveal all. Uh, Don't hold back. Oh, Bill, I was such an um, immature young fool. Well, aren't we all? Yeah, now I'm a mature young fool. <laughs> tell me... What's the name of this simpleton in your life we're going to talk about? Well, this happened when I was 19, and mm. his name was Jason. Jason? Yeah. Be and beware. Was... Beware of jerky Jason. <laughs> All right. And you were what, honey? I was 19. Yeah? And fell madly in love with him. Yeah. Uh, was this in college? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was he a teacher by any remote... No, he wasn't. Yeah, okay. No. He was a student? No, he wasn't a student either. Where did you pick him up, Doris? Uh, I met him at a dance. Uh, he was he was leaning there, looking very suave and debonair. Right. Yeah, and his bib overalls, which had been freshly pressed. Really, he's an oily weasel, but... <laughs> an oily weasel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst kind. But go ahead. You fell in love with Jason. Yeah, and he told me that he was engaged, but he didn't think he wanted to go through with the marriage. Uh-oh. And I fell for that, and so I went out with him, like, for ten months or so, and came the day he was to be married. Yeah? And told me that, well, after he was married, he'd set me up in a house and I could be his mistress. What? And you fell for that? Well, I was so in love with him, but the uh. day his marriage came, I got really uptight about it, and I thought, why should he marry her if he really loves me? Of course, the dawn came to you. Right. In a blinding flash, of, but at least you had that spasm of insight, honey. Yeah, of course, it takes ten months to... You should win a learner's permit in breaking <laughs> hearts. Right. Yeah. I thought, this is ridiculous. He has to go through all that hassle of marrying this girl that he really didn't care about. Yeah. Me believing him. So I went to the wedding. Oh. I dressed up so it looked like I was invited. And I walked in and sat down. And I started the ceremony. And this sort of upsets me now because I realized I ruined some poor child's life. And she has horrible memories of this. You mean the bride? Yes. Yeah. What did you do? Snatch the corsage out of her trembling hands? No, I did something worse. Tell me. The minister comes to the part and he says, anybody here? <laughs> oh. You know that part. Yeah. Or forever hold your peace. Yeah. Uh, speak now or forever hold your peace, dearly beloved, as we are gathered here. <laughs> Bill, I spoke then. What did you say? I, I stood up and I said, 
he can't marry this woman because he really loves me, and this whole wedding is a farce. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's neat. I carried on, and like the bride started trembling, and everybody started murmuring. And, <laughs> and I can I can just hear people gasping with astonishment, and little old ladies letting their hands drop in their laps helplessly. It's a typical Bible theme when they say the crowd murmurs. Yeah, yeah, oh sure. Oh, and everybody was really upset, and people grabbed me and tried to. So finally, I sat down and. Crowds, my peace. Yeah, crowds always murmur. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, they, you held your peace there. You sat down to use that term out of the out of the biblical <laughs> thing. Go ahead. Right. And so they finished the wedding, and she walks out, and she has tears streaming her face down her face. And I'm surprised the minister finished the ceremony. <laughs> I was too, and so they walked out, and I sort of walked out. By this time, I was hysterical, and I was oh. crying and carrying on, and. You did this all by yourself. Oh, I know. I'm such a foolish child. <laughs> yeah, but that was a very gutty move. I, I know, but, I mean, I was only thinking of myself. Here, this poor woman was sitting there, and she was in love with Jason as well. And what I can't figure out is how come the preacher finished the ceremony. I bet the poor dude had never run into that before. He sort of gulped, and he said, well, okay. Then he moved along with the ceremony. Well, I guess he didn't think I had the um, guts. Yeah. I'm going to open my own marriage chapel up in Vegas and call it the Balance We Church of the Gross Assumption. <laughs> Fly-by-night marriage association. Exactly. The Fly-by-night chapel. One of those stucco horrors up there in Vegas. Yeah. So, okay, so what was the final aftermath, outcome? I walked out, and I was really hysterical. And the first yeah. thing that happened was the bride's parents yeah? came over and really drilled me about Jason and asked me questions about him, and I ah. just all... And um, by that time, I felt really embarrassed and ashamed. And I wonder if he's still with that poor girl. Oh, I have no idea. But that was the end of your affair with Jason. That na yeah, naturally, I never heard from him, and I was too embarrassed to call him. And well, I'm glad you didn't, honey. But I bet you don't wear your heart at half-mast or your love in a sling anymore, do you? <laughs> I sure don't. I'm so careful. I'm not one to readily, as you say, commit matrimony. Yeah, please don't. Hold off, my dear. Okay. And, and perhaps a cautiously maturing relationship between us could, could happen. Right on, Bill. <laughs> one, one never knows, does one? Oh, but that was, that's what makes life interesting. Absolutely, and thanks for telling me about it, honey. Bill, I wanted to comment on your fantastic vocabulary. Oh. I really admire you. That's really neat. I just use the same words everyone else does, but I arrange them differently. <laughs> I love you, honey. Oh, yeah. Thanks for talking, Bill. Thank you, Doris. Bye, -bye. Bye darling. Bill Balance emphasizing that it's actually impossible to cheat life. I mean, there are no answers in the back of the book. Unless, of course, that book happens to be clutched by a caller checking in now to the Balance Talk. What's your first name? Kim. How old are you, Kim? Twenty-five. Are you married? No, uh-uh. Tell me about your situation in the extreme... Okay, first let me tell you how I got him. I used to sit in a room and darken it and light a candle. Yeah? Wait ten minutes and pray that he'd come driving along with his car. And well, this used to go on every night, and most of the time it worked. That's if you're superstitious. Well, wait a minute. Was this a, a room in a boarding house or in yeah, a private... Right. It was a room like at the Y. Oh, like at the YW. Yeah. So why would he be driving by... This well, he used to work there at night. And Boy. he'd come around and hang around in the daytime all the time there. One of my favorite fantasies is to be is to be house father or janitor in the girls' dorm. Yeah. Well, he wasn't a janitor. He yeah, was... with a master key. <laughs> well, go ahead. So what happened? Okay, so and we used to go... We, first, we went out for six months, and I could never get him to kiss me. So, But he'd always whistle. Had you ever thought of gargling? Tell him to freeze. And then get him down. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're going too fast, honey. He wouldn't kiss you. No. And then what happened? He'd whistle all the time. Well, did maybe he had loose dentures. <laughs> no, but my friend said, you know, when he whistled, tell him to freeze. Because he'd put his lips together and pucker them up, right? Oh, yeah. So, I did. And that's how I got him to kiss me. <laughs> you said freeze, and he and his lips remained like that. As, right. if, as if they were shot full of Novocaine. Okay, so we've gone out for five years. And what? I... Moved him to New York and moved myself to New York. Yeah, wait a minute. Did you marry him? No, uh-uh. We oh, just lived together. Yeah, five long years. Uh, yeah. What sort of a harebrained job does he have? Uh, he's a singer. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, singers are always like that. Yeah, they certainly are. Boy, you've wasted five, but go ahead. Okay, and uh, now he's in New York. Of course. Yeah, now, he's the first guy I ever really loved and had any kind of a relationship with. Never marry a male singer. No, I Or know. any other kind. And uh, so, to get him here, I took sleeping pills. He called me two weeks before Christmas. Yeah? Uh-huh. And told me he had a new girl. <laughs> Now, that's right. He was trying to get out of getting you a Christmas gift. Yeah, well, he did. So I took sleeping pills. Yeah. Called him, and then he called the police. Ah, that was dramatic. Yeah, from New York, right? <laughs> and he called my neighbors and my landlord, and I ran over to my girlfriends, and they took me to the doctors, and all I had taken was ten Somnex. Oh, yeah. Well, that wouldn't have been lethal. Oh, I know. <laughs> they just said that I could get sick. Well, did, did he come flying out from New York then? No, he didn't. I went flying to New York. What a silly girl. I know. <laughs> I'm terrified of flying. Yeah. I did for the first time. I went there just about four weeks ago, and I stayed for two weeks. And he was fine, and everything was nice, and I came back. Yeah? And we're still in the same situation. Oh, well. He married, and he doesn't, and that's some, all. Sometimes I think that maintaining the tension of a love affair gives people a curious, weird sort of satisfaction. You know, the on-again, off-again, the advance and retreat, all those love games. I hate it. Yeah, well, so do I, because I've been down that... Come to one big head. Well, I think that maybe, I think maybe within 24 hours, a new man will come cantering into your life. I hope on, so. <clears throat> on a white steed, maybe just a Shetland pony, but he's going to come cantering in there, honey. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I'm delighted you called, Kim, and thanks for doing so. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, darling. Bill Balance, revealing for the very first time, dear hearts, that happiness may be thought, sought, or caught but it cannot be bought, except by a caller who claims to be... Hi, Bill. This is Irene. Irene, how old are you? I'm 45. Tell me about the extreme lengths you've gone to to win back a dude. Well, I was in love when I was 16 years old. What a memory. He went overseas, and I didn't see him for 28 years. That much... I was a bobby soxer, and... He went overseas, and I should have written and didn't. You know how that goes. Yeah, there was another boy in your life, some pimply adolescent, probably. Yeah, he was. That's the truth. Yeah, so after 28 years, this guy came back into your life? Well, I'm a professional skip tracer. I uh, look for missing people. A skip tracer. All right. So one day I thought, gosh, I wonder whatever happened to... We're calling George. Yeah, let's call him old George. Yeah. Uh, Okay. I'm in my office working for this company that looked for people, and so I thought, well, I'll put a skip on him. Yeah. And by golly, there he was within about 20 miles of where I lived. Fantastic. How did you make contact after 28 years, and how well, did you how did you justify it? Uh, I went through various means of finding out where he was working. Yeah. And I called him on the phone, and I said, hi, this is Irene. How are you? Uh-oh. And he says, who did you say you were? Oh, <laughs> I wow. Said, this is Irene. And he said, uh, not the Irene. And I says, yeah, not I'd have, the Irene. And you know what I'd have said? I'd have said, not my Irene. <laughs> well, you know what he said then? What did he say? He says, darling, I still love you. Where yeah. are you? Wow, and did he say, do you have any teeth left? Yeah, yeah he did, but I didn't. <laughs> not a tooth in your head. <laughs> but I have very good-looking dentures, I'll put it that <laughs> And okay. then he says, oh, he says, I bet you're just as beautiful as you ever were. And I said, well, you must remember, you know, that... 28 years have gone by. All right, I'm a grandmother now, and but I'm still slim and trim and look good. You know, I have to put that in, Bill, because I know you don't like your girls to be... Yeah, I don't like these great sweat hogs, you yeah, know. well, I'm not. Yeah, I can tell you're not an obese porker. No. A little dainty critter. Yeah, right. But, but wait a minute. How long was it before you and George actually saw each other after 28 years? The very next night. That, in fact, that very night. Did you race into each other's arms? Really did. Hugging and munching. Yeah. Breathing fire, moaning low. Really did, yeah. What a, what a fascinating... That would make a wonderful TV skit, it, you know? And it really happened, Bill. I've told this to uh, some of my, you know, my friends that know me yeah. and know him. Well, had you... Uh, were you a widow or divorced at the time? Divorced. Divorce. And was he also free? Yes, he was. It did, he had just gotten free. Wow. So we timed it just perfectly. How fantastic. And we're married now and very, very, very happy. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Is he a good provider? Very good. Uh, when you uh, 
Uh, let me ask you something very personal, but you'd be hurt, I think, and the entire world would hate me if I didn't ask you. Uh, because you're a grown adult woman, uh-huh. and obviously a bright one working for a skip-tracing organization, did you check into his credit rating before you moved in for the yeah, kill? I did. That's my girl. That's it. That's what I want my well, girl. I want to know who he owed, how much, what, you know. Absolutely. And if you discovered he was a deadbeat, you never would have contacted him. That's right. I found all that out first. Now, listen, that's a perfect example. I want my young kids, uh, the young teenagers on up through the 20s and up to the middle of their 30s, to always check their men out, you know. It's best. Yeah, and look what happened. Now you're living happily together. Is there lots of hugging and squeezing? Lots making... of hugging and squeezing, and he's one of these type of guys that if you don't feel well, he brings you home a flower. Boy. And uh, What sort of a job does George have? He's in. Uh, he's with computers and this sort of thing. And you're still uh, skip tracing? Yes, I am, Bill. That's fantastic. This is no doubt going to be my finest call of the day, Irene. The one oh, that... I love you, Bill. The one that's the, the most... George, of course. The, mo- <laughs> the most poignant and then the most piercing and the most unusual. And thank you so much, Irene. Right. Thank you, Bill. You can gra- I love you. Give me a kiss, Bill. Well, do you have your teeth in? Yeah, I got them in on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Pucker up. Mm. <laughs> Boy, you're magnificent, kid. Oh, thanks, Bill. See you soon, dear. Bye, Bye darling. Hi, Bill Balance here. How would you like to extinguish fear and anxiety and place yourself in full self-control? There's only one way you call me under the name of... Laney. Laney, L-A-N-I? Right. How old are you, Lane? Twenty-five. Are you married? Yes, I am, very what's, happily. What's his first name? Jim. How old is Jim O? Thirty. All right, tell me about the extreme lengths you've gone to to win somebody's heart. And was it Jim? Yes, it was Jim. Yeah, how did you nail him at the goal line, honey? Well, um, I had to learn how to skydive. Come on now, are you pulling my ripcord? No, I'm not. Your man Jim was a skydiver. Um, yeah, it's not not professional. He just liked doing it. And um, I've been married two years, and three years ago, um, he our relationship was a little shaky, and he got interested in somebody else. Do you have a slight cold, honey? Yes. A mildly malfunctioning, uh, slightly tipped uvula there. Yes. Okay. Okay. So he started going with somebody else, and I bet she was a skydiver. Um. Yeah, not until he got through with her. See, she didn't like skydiving either. See, I'm, I was horrified of it, and I wouldn't even get near him when he got had parachutes around or anything. I just hated it. And she she liked it once he taught her how. Yeah, because she was aerodynamically flawless. Yes. And, yes. Um, he said, um, he said that look, um, our relationship is getting you know kind of shaky. So either you skydive with me um, to this deserted cabin. Wait a minute. Are you teasing, Bill? No. <laughs> I can't imagine a guy saying, either you skydive with me into this well, deserted cabin or it's tough taco time. Get our problems straightened out. Uh-huh. When we were ever alone, I always got interrupted. So he said, look, I'm getting fed up with getting interrupted. So either you skydive with me to this... Um, into this deserted cabin. Right. Or it's, it's kiss or off. else. <laughs> that yeah. was going to be it. So it I was... said, well, look, you know how I feel. Stop nagging me about skydiving because I'm, I'm horrified of it. So he took, so I wouldn't do it, and he took this girl instead. Yeah, what was her name, I'll bet? Pamela. Yeah, girls named Pamela are always the other woman. Ever notice that? So they spent a week there. A whole week there, yeah, skydiving. I decided on the third day... She was folding his parachute. Yeah, I decided on the third day that I'm going to take a crash course. Yeah? Because, because you know, I, I loved him too much, and I do now, to lose him to this cheapo girl. I, I learned how, and the second, and the first time I parachuted, it was okay, and I didn't hurt myself, but the second time, I broke my leg in three places. And that's when he found true love. He saw you with I, your... I, I went to the hospital, and he found out from the instructor that I was in the hospital, and... And he took you into his spindly arms and squeezed you. Yeah. And he said, any I girl... Since I, was, since I, I must have loved him more than Pamela did. Yeah. Because I went to all this trouble, and I broke his leg. Boy, if he, if he loved you that much for breaking one leg... Think what he'd have done if you'd broken both legs. He'd have broke my back. <laughs> Wouldn't that be magnificent? I think I, I think I've got a well, a sort of a cloying crush on you. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Don't let Jim know about us, though. Oh, oh, I won't. And thanks for calling, Lanny. Yeah, I love you. Bye, honey. I love you. Bye, Bye cutie. Avarice and eloquence in action. Why? Just to impress this caller, whose first name is Marie. Marie, how old are you? I'm twenty. 
Tell me about your lost love that you tried to win back, honey. Oh, you're right, right. Yeah, well, sure. <laughs> it, it was a little while ago. Yeah, what was his name? Can I, do I have to say? Just his first name. Come on, honey. Mike. All right, how old a, pimps, how old a pimply pipsqueak is Mike? Oh, pipsqueak, but not pimply. He's 20. 20? Yeah. All right, way too young for you, but go ahead. Oh, the next one is a lot younger than that. All right, well, never mind the next one. I want to find, uh, never mind his his sequel. I want to find out about Mike and to what extreme lengths you went to win back his ungrateful head and heart. Well, I tried being sweet. Yeah? Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah? So then I tried mental telepathy. It didn't work. Mental telepathy? Yeah, you know... You tried to send out vibes. Yeah. And it failed miserably because he didn't have a mind to receive it. You got it. Ab- absolutely. And then and what? I went out with his best friend. And that did it. It failed. It, that even failed. It even failed. He was relieved to farm you out on his best friend. No, I mean, I got him back the day before I had the date with his best friend, and it kind of blew after he saw me with his best friend. Yeah, he said, well, okay, ta-ta, that's it, Marie. What's that sniveling and whining in the background? Oh, that's a little girl named Michelle. Uh, is she your child? Yeah. Oh, I, you didn't tell me you'd been married. Oh, you want to know? No, I'm not particularly. Too. You what, honey? I was married, too. Oh, you've been a busy kid for a girl of only 20. Oh, yeah. Are you a great tub of love, a sort of a lord, a large pulsating porker? Oh, no. Huh? All of a sudden, I had a vision of a chubby, moon-faced girl. Oh, you sick me thing, you. Yeah, with a with a little no. little mouth like a like a thumb hole in a jug of suet. No. Yeah, okay. I'm just teasing you a little to waken you up to awaken you. No, 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 no. I'm okay. not at all. I'm very thin. All right, my dear. So, what are you doing for chuckles now that you've lost Mike? I'm going out with his best friend's best friend. Oh, you're still going out there. Oh, with his best friend's best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, got old and sour. Yeah. I think you're fibbing to Bill. No, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, okay. So what do you, uh, I guess that's it then, isn't it? You've told me everything. I told you everything, yeah. Yeah, what a what femme... What do you do about it? What a femme fatale you are. Falling in love with you would be like bleeding in front of a shark. What is that? Oh, they come right after you, yeah, huh? absolutely. Okay, honey, thanks for calling. Bill Balance, little observation that the trouble with ignorance is that it tends to pick up confidence as it goes along. And, of course, that's why there's nothing more terrifying than ignorance in action. Hope that philosophy impresses this caller, whose first name is? Lynn. How old are you, Lynn? Twenty-six. Are you married? I'm nervous. (laughs) Oh, you're not nervous? You're not married? You're nervous. Right. Sometimes they are equal. Sometimes they are coincident. (laughs) <laughs> Lynn, tell me to what extreme lengths you've gone to win a man back. Well, I pretended that I took a whole bottle of aspirin, which he thought would kill me. Yeah, instead of that, it uh, just got you a head on headaches for about 20 years. I didn't take it. I just poured it down the sink. Yeah, and did you did you pretend that you had swooned on that threadbare living room carpet? No, in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you were sprawled in the bathroom there in your all-weather jammies. Right. Yeah, did you make sure he heard you clatter to the deck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and did he come racing in? Yes. Then he cradled you in his spindly arms. <laughs> And he said, speak to me, Lynn. What no, have I done? What's the matter with you? <laughs> and what did you say through your through your swollen lips? Oh, I told him that I took some pills, and he wanted to take me to the hospital, and I said no. You said, I don't want to live without you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we all utter these ghastly cliches under duress? <laughs> <laughs> right. What's this rodent's first name, this nincompoop? Oh, Ken. Ken? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. What what happened? Did, did Ken say, okay, I'll get married. Uh, I'll, I mean, <laughs> let's get married as long as you won't die on me. No, we were married. He was going to leave. Ah. Well, did he come grudgingly back to you then? He stayed. Yeah, and is he still with you? No. Ah, you finally... <laughs> <laughs> How did you finally unload this numbskull? Well, he finally left again, and after he was gone a while, I finally decided I was better off without him and I could find someone better because he was a rotten husband. Yeah, well, you know, anyway, we men, we tend to sort of build up a type of immunity to women's female threats of disaster and suicide. You know, after a while, you've either got to go through with it or just forget about it, you know. 
Well, uh, we weren't really happy. I was just so young that I was scared to death to be on my own. Yeah, you sort of felt that for the time being, Ken was totally irreplaceable. Right. Yeah. It was better than being alone. And Have you seen him over the years now since... Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, how is your relationship now that you're no longer shackled together in matrimony? I can hardly stand him. <laughs> there you are. Isn't that the way it frequently is? We look at a former sweetheart whom we were devoted to, and we can't see what we saw in that individual, you know? That's right. Are you happily remarried now? No, I'm happily single. Uh, you're just sort of taking pot luck. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm a medical assistant. Hey, that's neat. Uh, have you, uh, well, do you, do you, uh, are you threshing around with a lot of interns? <laughs> In the doctor's office. Yeah, I have an idea that medical, female medical assistants uh, have more fun than nurses do. Do you wear a little white dress? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and some bogus stethoscopes around your, around your tiny pencil neck? Yeah. Yeah, I can see you now, honey. And I want to thank you for calling in today. Okay, thank Th you. Thanks for calling, Lynn. You're welcome. Bye, honey. Bill Balance, revealing for the first time, dear hearts and gentle hussies, that mosquitoes are like small children. The minute they stop making noise, you know they're into something. Perhaps the epidermis of this caller, whose first name is... Jana. Jana, how old are you? Twenty-two. All right, tell me... Twenty-two in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, let's call you twenty-two, Jana. Okay, fine. Tell me about the extreme lengths you've gone to well, to win back some guy. I guess trying to kill yourself, which is kind of silly when you look at it now. Especially, I guess uh, no man's worth it. Especially if you accidentally succeed in killing yourself. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Tell me what made you, what drove you to that? Well, I guess we eloped, and then uh, a couple of days later, he told me to go home, and we didn't get married yet. <laughs> you mean, how long ago was this, honey? Oh, uh, I guess about three years ago. You guess about three years ago. Are you still seeing this numbskull? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I hope not. No, I'm engaged now. <laughs> yeah, has, uh, have you been a little more careful in your selection of a fiancé? Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah. He's not... I guess you learn from your mistake. I hope that this other guy isn't pulling your lorn yet. Yeah, I hope so, too. Yeah. You... <laughs> I hope he's not listening also. <laughs> yeah. What's the, what's the nincompoop's first name? Uh, which one? <laughs> The, the the current one. Larry. Larry. Right. Guys named Larry are usually crooks, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, he's Italian. <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't make too much difference, unless, of course, he happens to have a mafia badge on him. Well, I didn't see one yet in his or drives. Pockets. Maybe he drives one of those long black mafia staff cars. Yes, he does. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> he does. He's probably a member of the mafia black. marching band, you know. All right, now, honey... Yeah. Jonna, have you had Larry's background examined to be sure he's not a crook or to be sure he doesn't own, I mean, owe a lot of debts? Well, uh, he was working for a finance company, so I guess that's his problem then. Yeah, <laughs> he's a crook. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's... You should see his job now. He's definitely a crook. Yeah, well, don't tell me the name of the finance company, but he probably charges charges usurious rates. Oh, not me. <laughs> what what sort of a What sort of a job does he have now? Uh, he works for a car dealer. He's a closer. <laughs> he he probably frisks people's glove compartments the minute the cars come into the lot there. Well, you I don't better. Know. I you, really don't know what he does. Over uh, is there, there he closes the deal? Is there lots of hugging and tussling? Uh, I, I would imagine. Well, only you know, my dear. <laughs> Uh, don't, yeah, only me, I hope. <laughs> yeah, listen, don't marry him until you've had his background gone into thoroughly. Okay? Okay, fine. Thanks for calling, Jana. Anytime. Anytime. Bye bye. Bye, honey. Bill Balance with a heartwarming Balancian proverb A mile walk with a true friend has only 100 steps. And let's hope that that pierces the cerebellum of this caller, whose first name is. Sue, how old are you? Twenty-seven. Tell me about the extreme lengths you've gone to. Well, I'm not too sure I called about that. I'm in a hospital right now. Hey, how did you end up there, honey? Well... Are you wearing one of those carefully vented hospital gowns? Oh, yes. My doctors think my hospital gown's sexy. <laughs> now, now, my dear. Uh, tell me, in the realm of good taste, uh, what are you in the hospital for? I was in a car accident last Saturday night. Well, whose fault was it? Uh, mine. 
Yeah, did you did you back end somebody? No, I hit a parked car. Boy, were you snockered? No. Oh, uh, were you? I just I left my husband. You left him. Yeah, the night before, and I was. Uh... Oh, you were in sort of an emotional state then. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we we kill ourselves. It's a sort of a suicide impulse, isn't it? No, it wasn't. I was I was just you know I was out and I was I had I was staying at my mother's and I was just you know trying to get my whole head straight as far as you know. So your thought your thoughts were not really focused on driving. No, and, and I remember I looked over at the radio to, to turn the station or something, and I, what, I, what I was doing was going home. I'd been sitting and reading a newspaper and marking off jobs. Oh, yeah, going to go out and make a living and show him. Really? And, I, and my mother, you know, she said, oh, you know, I, I want you to do this and this and this, and, you know, everybody, you know, they like to throw in their... Everybody meddles. <laughs> you tell them to kiss off. Yeah, so anyway, I just sat there, and, and, and I started home, and... And I all of a sudden it dawned on me. I thought, you know, what am I going there for? I don't live there anymore. Yeah, and with tears coursing down your tiny face. No, and I just remembered I turned, I looked over, and I, instead of looking at the road, I was looking at the radio. Ah, yes. And I was flipping the, and that's the last thing I remembered. Next thing I knew, they were cutting me out of the car. Now, if you'd been listening to my show or my station, nothing would have happened to you. You know, they won't let me. What do you mean they? Who was they? The hospital. They won't let you listen to my show? No, they won't. They, they won't let me have my radio. Why not, my dear? Maybe it's contaminated by listening to the wrong stations. <laughs> Why do you suppose they won't let you listen? Are you in a gigantic ward full of people threshing around and groaning all the time? I'm, I'm in traction. And, and, uh... It's a small town north of here. Huh? I'm just mumbling to myself. Oh, that's what... all right. Hey, tell me what all you broke, Sue. Well, I... I... I slipped a disc in my back. Yeah. And got internal injuries, and uh, I can fuse your spine, you know, if you want me to. A couple of those loose, rattling vertebrae. Yeah, and I've got a, a fracture in my neck, and you know, just. Um, Gee. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here in a couple of days. I got a date with a ski slope. You're not gonna go skiing while you're in traction, honey. You're gonna have the most unusual posture on the beginner's slope. Well. Oh. You know, <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. And Wait a minute. Did you I make know. that up? I did not make that up, Bill, and you're not going to pull that on me. Boy, where there's a will, uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of relatives fighting over it. <laughs> really? Or God's you're will gonna tease me with the is in probate. That I threw in. <laughs> uh, Sue, I'm going to send out my special healing vibes for you. Are you ready? Okay. Bill, Bill Balance, Magic, Whammo, Alakazam, Therapeutic, Tranquilizer Beam. <laughs> there. There. Hey, you... and I called up to thank you, mister. You may call me Billo. Okay. What do you want to thank me for? Because you gave me vibrations to get straight A's in school, and I did it. Well, my vibes never failed. What did you get straight A's in, honey? Um. Everything? Everything. Well, you were destined to because you've got the brains for it. Now, don't go back. Don't go back to this guy we were talking about. What's your husband's first name? Mike. Never go back to Mike after he breaks your heart like well, that. He's. It's really funny because well, see, you know, he's got four kids at home. Wait a minute. They're not yours, you mean? Well, no, they're my. They're his by his first wife, but I was raising them. Yeah. My, the one little girl's mine. You saw her. You made me your honorary wife that day. You were out here, you mean? Yeah. You remember I told you she wanted to be. You, she wanted you to be her honorary grandfather, and you, you refused. And I groaned. I said, I'm only a boy. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I remember you now, Sue. I didn't realize you'd been out here. Oh, yeah. I was the one that brought you the decoupage. Yeah, that was great. I You decoupaged my heart when you did that, honey. Did I really? Yes, I you did. look with your roll-top desk. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've been looking forward to your coming back out here, honey. Do it soon, will you? Oh, I'd love to. But you know what I wanted to say about my husband... That man has just been doing a toe dance. <laughs> he has just really been... The neighbor women have been calling me up, you know, and it is just a riot. Maybe he's always standing on his toes because his mother used to bathe him in a cone-shaped fire bucket, you know. Well, he never had a mother, so oh. he hasn't got that complex. I never had one either. We couldn't afford one for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to send out all kinds of positive thoughts for you on that ski slope. Yeah, I'm going down on crutches. Yeah, that's even better, my dear. I figure if I'm going to do it, I might as well... Yeah, use your crutches like ski poles. 
Okay. Okay, darling. Thanks for calling. Okay, I love you, Bill. Love you, honey. Bye soon. Bill Balance, impeccably dignified, observing my personal deep breathing Lamaze pulmonaries are about to reveal, to propel, in fact, into our lives a full term caller whose first name is? Elizabeth. How old are you, love? I'm 20 years old. You know what I can tell about you right now? Yes. You are calling from one of those ghastly little tiny modern phones. Yes, I am. Yeah, because they always sound they always sound hollow and cheap. Yes, it is. Yes. All right. Are you in the bathroom? No, I'm not. Okay. They always sound uh, hollow. They make your voice sound hollow as if your voice is ricocheting off uh, bathroom tiles. Anyway, I'm delighted to have you on the show, Elizabeth. I'm very delighted to talk to you, too, Bill. We've never talked, have we? No, it's the first time. You sound so sweet. Are you a married woman? I hope not. No, I'm not. I'm just going through a divorce. I have two more months for my final. What, what was the name of your brutal husband? First name only. His first name was Edmund. And how old a simpleton is he? Excuse me? How old a numbskull is Edmund? How old is he? Yes. Oh, he's only two years older than me. I hope you didn't have a child by him. Yes, I did. Oh, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, boy or girl kid? I had, a, I had a boy. And how old a lad is he? He's two and a half years old. And what's his first name? Um, the same as his father. Edmund. Yes. You don't call him Junior, do you? No, we don't. Yeah, that's good. Well, my dear, uh, did you want to uh, expand or dilate on the, on the topic of... Uh, have you ever met someone of the opposite sex you were never able to figure out, or did you want to talk about something else? Uh, about something else. Oh. Well, the reason I call right now, because I heard your um, show a couple of minutes ago when I was driving to my um, apartment. Uh-huh. And I, I thought it sounded very interesting. It's the first time I ever do, you know, something like this. Oh, a lot of women have told me that. They've said, Bill, this is the first time I've ever, I've ever done something like this. Yes, it just sounds very interesting. And uh, right now... I'm at the, like, you were talking of the low point of my life. Oh, yes. Very lonely and depressed and everything just going wrong. And Oh, dear. And, um... Boy, that's... Well, yeah, when you're at a low point, you can't, you can't even imagine uh, ever being any different, can you? You can't imagine things turning out well when you're really feeling low and depressed. Well, yes, I try to have the positive side. Uh-huh. I try to say to myself, well... Today was a bad day. I'm pretty sure tomorrow will be better. So I try to think positive. I'm going to wait a minute here. I'm going to make sure that... Wait a minute. Tomorrow's going to be better because of this... Could you hear that? Yes. That's my electromagnetic positive thinking device. <laughs> uh, is there a new man in your life beside Bill Balance? No, it's not. As a matter of fact, um, I've been doing um, uh, dating. Uh-huh. And um, But it's nothing more than date. I haven't really found anything, anybody that's... That's interesting to me. What uh, What do you think it was that broke up you and uh, and Edmund? Um, we're just we're not we weren't compatible at all. Um, we have um, I'm very ambitious. He wasn't. I wanted um, something more out of life. Sure. I was too young when I got married. It was a mistake, and a lot of things like that. You know, we're just. Oh yeah. How long How long were you married to him totally, sweetheart? For uh, two and a half years. And how long, how long were you married to him before it dawned on you that, that he was a lazy bum? Uh, well, I knew it was a mistake right after six months. The reason I didn't, uh, I didn't leave him before, it was because of my son, because oh, I yeah. love my son a lot. Oh, sure. And <laughs> no, I understand that. Uh -huh. And you always, you always hope that things are, and expect yes. things will get better. Yes, but then I thought to myself, why should I, I knew right away that I was going to get a divorce, and I said to myself, why should I wait five or ten years or fifteen years? Sure. Do it right now while I'm twenty years old. You're exactly. That's the wisest thing I've heard on my program for weeks. Exactly. Yes, you know why, Bill? Tell me. I mean, so so many couples have broken up after fifteen, twenty years. Yes. And I think that's a waste of time. Yes, absolutely. And I said to myself, I'm not willing to sacrifice myself fifteen to twenty years. I mean, maybe in ten, fifteen years, maybe he would have divorced me. Who knows? But I think you're very wise to bail out of it if, when you're still a young, attractive lady instead of instead of waiting until middle age sets in. Yes. Yeah. And uh, lately, I've been, you know, like um, there's always guys, you know, that huh. um, want to date me and stuff. 
Yeah. But um, somehow I just want to get my life together. I want to go back to college. Oh, you that's know. that's terrific. Yes, and get myself a, a better job. And what kind of what kind of course will you take in college, Elizabeth? What kind of course would I take? Yes. Well, I always wanted to be a bilingual teacher. You're you're Spanish, are you? Yes. Um, and yes. You, do you speak Spanish? Are you are you totally bilingual in Spanish and, yes, and, I am, and English? Yes, fluently. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Yes. Yeah, you can't miss if you are totally bilingual. Yes. Did you learn English right from the day you were born? No, I wasn't. I learned it when I was um, eight and a half years old. Gee, that's interesting. Yes. Uh, of course, under when a child is under ten, uh, their 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 brains are still malleable, so that and and uh, absorptive and receptive, so it's easy for them to learn a different language. Yeah, you speak beautiful English. Oh, thank you. Uh, was uh, was Edmund uh, Mexican? No, he was uh, American. Where did you meet him, dear? I met him in a uh, in a fair. What What was he doing at the fair? Was he in the sideshow? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he was just walking around with his friends in a fair, and um, so I was walking around with my friends also, and that's how we met. And uh-huh. he just told me I had beautiful eyes, and um, from from then, then we just he just got my telephone number, and um, I met him in a party a couple of about two weeks later. Yeah. And um, ever since then, at the time, I was only 17, and I was having a lot of problems with my parents. They were very strict to me. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was having, I was going through a lot of emotional problems, and sure. um, I thought that was a way of, you know, getting out the house by getting married. Sure, yeah. One way to escape your parents, to go off with Edmund. More young women do that and always regret it. Yes, I regret it very much because I found out it was a mistake. I was yeah. very, you know, very young to even think about marriage. Did Did Edmund have a hard time keeping a job, Elizabeth? No, no, he hadn't. He's a very hardworking man. Well, I thought you said he was lazy. No, I didn't ever said he was lazy. Oh, he just uh, not ambitious. No, he's not ambitious, and also his temper. He has a very He's sort of like a grouchy guy, you know. Oh, yeah. It was, you know... Does he like to hang around with guys and shoot pool and drive his motorcycle? No, but he's, um, he spent a lot of time with his friends, oh, and um, he... Um, I always wonder about those guys who much prefer the, the yes. company of men. I think they're excited by the, the aroma of disintegrating elastic, especially those athletic uh, jocks. No, well, he used to drink a lot, and I guess his friends... You know, since his friends were drinking too, and uh-huh. I don't drink. You know, I only drink on a special occasions. Yeah. And um, uh, I guess he had more fun with his friends. And he's also he was very mature, very very mature. Yeah, he's and only twenty years old, but I've gone through a lot of through a lot of things in my life. I've you, gone through a lot. You of really things. have. You're not even twenty one yet. Yes, but I feel like I'm twenty five or so. Yeah, but you're, I cannot tell you how wise you are to, to bail out of this marriage while you're still a young woman. Yes, it, and um, a lot of my family, they ask me, do you think you might go back to him? And I say, no, because I know what I want, and that's not the person I want now, you know. And not, I'll, be, I'll bet Edmund said he'd change, didn't he? Oh, yes, but... Um, oh, I'll be a new man, Elizabeth. I'll, I'll be ambitious, and I'll never lose my temper, and I'll never go out with the boys again. No, we see, this time he didn't say that. He didn't uh, say that because I gave him three chances before. Oh, yeah. But um, this is it. I mean, I never gone... I never left him for two weeks, and this time I left him for uh, six months now. Oh, yeah. It's definitely no. It's a no-no. Oh, oh sure. And... Um, um, I just wish I can meet somebody that that can accept me the way I am because I'm a very easygoing person. I'm outgoing. I'm sociable. Um, you sound to me as if you're a beautiful young lady. <laughs> and um, if I were twenty years younger, I'd pounce on you myself. <laughs> well, thank you. Except um, the only reason that I'm that I'm scared now, as soon as you tell a guy that you're divorced, you know. Uh huh. They usually now they they either don't date you just you know to meet a nice girl, but they want right away you know they want to go to bed with you or yeah they expect sex because you're because yeah, you're, you've been married and stuff yeah and that's not the way I am yeah don't let them know that you've been married and have a little kid until the third or fourth date yeah that's what my friend told me you oh, know she sure. goes let them know that you've been divorced yeah right away they get the wrong idea 
And, um, That's right. They really do. Also, I think a, I think an older guy would be more suitable for you, like 30 or 35. As a matter of fact, um, yes, I think that I would love to date more older guys and younger guys. Yeah, an older guy would would be uh, would appreciate you and understand you more, sweetheart. Yes, I think so because, um, uh, well, like they say, a girl is always five years, you know, more mature than. Oh, a absolutely. Uh, and, and sometimes it's not true, but in my case, I think it was because I could have been a terrific wife. I was a loyal wife. Yeah. I was a very good mother. Oh yeah. I'm not bragging about myself, but you well, know. Well, you know those things are true, and I'm glad you're saying them. You know, a lot of guys. Uh, grown-up men in their 30s, let's say, who would be perfect for you, would love to have a ready-made family, love to have a little baby son right off without going through that all that uh, long waiting period of the diapers and everything else. Mm-hmm. I think that would be terrific. I tell you what, I'm going to make you a member of my highly regarded uh, Balance Academy of Dramatic Arts and Sinuses. I want you to call me once a month, Elizabeth. Once a and, month? Yeah, and give me a progress report, because yours is a perfect example of a bright, alert young woman uh, who uh, who married too early and who had a child and who uh, had the sense to, to get herself out, to extricate herself uh, from a disastrous marriage before she got too old. I think that's terrific. And I love you, and I'm going to turn you over to my producer. Thank you so much. Fantastic young lady. Yeah, she was, uh, she was really interesting. Of course, you know, on the Balanced Talk Show, what we do is annihilate time and distance. And once heard here, you live forevermore in a non-threatening world. I wish I'd hear from some of those rustic oddballs from Outback. Maybe this one. Snitch on yourself, especially if you're passing under the name of... Ralph. Ralph, how old a fellow are you? Oh, I'm 39. Okay, what shall we talk about? Well, I think one of your questions was, what was the lowest point in your life? Have you had a low point? Oh, oh yeah, a real low point. <laughs> all right, tell the entire nation all about it. Well, it was, a, was when I found out I was getting divorced. Oh, how did she lay that bombshell on you? How did she lay that on me? Very good, Ralph. Oh, yeah, I understood that. Well, I came home from work one night, and she wasn't home. She said, and the kid we're going to be gone. How, how many children? Oh, one boy. How old was the boy at the time she notified you of this? Four years. Oh, that's got to be a terrible blow. Was, weren't there any early warning signals, Ralph? Well, there were warning signals. I guess I tried to ignore them. Uh, yeah, we always do. We always think things are... We either think it's our imagination or we always think things will be better in a week or so. Except they get worse all the time. Yeah, isn't that true? Once, once, once the... Uh, once the estrangement between a woman and a man begins, it seems that everything adds to it. I'm pretty much over it now, but it took a while. Have you remarried? Oh, no. You're very wise. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, was it... Uh, what What was... in? Now that you look back with a little perspective, a little sense of proportion, what do you think the reason for the breakup was? Well, I think what led to it is... Uh, I worked uh, an eight-hour job, and we had a business also, and... Uh, most of the time got devoted to the business and then to myself and the family. Yeah, that'll do it. Was your wife helping you in the, in either one of these uh, phases? Well, no, she she had the business. I was helping her out, actually, and I worked full-time job. Does she still have the business? No, we had sold that as part of the divorce, and she's working back in that same trade again. Which is what? Hairdresser. Well, now, do, do, you, have, do you have affable contact with her? Uh, at times. Sometimes. I do see my son regularly. I was about to ask that. That would be an awful blow if you couldn't see your kid. Well, she tried to use that and hold that against me. Oh, they almost always do. Use the child as a as a weapon. As a wedge, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, as a, yeah. Uh, is there, are you going out with the ladies again, or are you still sort of reclusing it up? No, I'm not a priest. I haven't been. You haven't been going out with ladies? Yeah, yeah I have been. I say I haven't been a priest. Oh, yeah. What's that have to do with it? Oh, you mean celibacy? Right. Well, a lot of guys, I wasn't thinking of that so much, as a lot of guys get so embittered uh, toward ladies that they say, oh, the hell with it for a while. Well, I think I, think I got kind of scared of marriage for that reason. Oh, sure. You, you don't have to marry every woman you neck with. Oh, no. Heck no. And the, pe- the person who calls it necking is a very poor judge of anatomy. <laughs> exactly. Has your aged wife remarried? Uh, unfortunately not. However, I do carry a sign around, ex-wife for sale, take over payments. 
But in other words, if you if she gets remarried, then you won't have to pay any more alimony. Precisely. Yeah. Well, I hope that that. If you like, I will send out a merit. What's the name of your of your grizzled ex-wife? First name. Edie. Edie. Yeah. E D I E. Right. How old a woman is she? Uh, she's seven years older than me to make her forty-six. You married a woman seven years older? Yes. Well, maybe that had something to do with it too. She felt the hot breath of Father Time on her, on her, on her uh, spavin shoulder blades. That's uh, possible. Is Edie a, a good-looking woman, or is it sort of dog time? Shapely. Pardon me. She's very shapely. Is she good-looking though? A lot of women can have a marvelous figure, but uh, be a real beast. Oh yeah, she's she's nice looking. Okay, woman available, age forty-six. Uh, your boy is what eight now? Nine. No. Okay. I'm sending out my my lure so that somebody will marry Edie within 36 hours and relieve you of all those uh, alimony payments. That's a good shot. <laughs> Ralph, for your neat call, I'm going to make you a member of my Academy of Dramatic Arts and Sinuses. I appreciate that, Bill. That's the Balance Academy, and it also this this certificate will also protect you. Uh, from selecting the wrong woman for your next trip up that middle aisle. Well, that's what I need. Put you on hold. So there, he's he's divorced, has a little boy, and she laid that bombshell. That was a low point in his life. Poor devil. That was Ralph. He's now 39. It's Bill Balance who, who claims that woman's intuition is nothing more than man's transparency. Bill Balance, live local and pulsating with indigenous insights of truly prodigious dimensions. Why? Just to impress this caller, whose first name is? Renee. Renee, R-E-N-E with an accent? Yes. Why, Renee, how old a woman are you? Nineteen. Oh, are you a college lady? No. What do you, what do, you do uh, during the daylight hours of your life? Are you a, are you a married woman? No, I'm not. Can you speak up a little, Renee? I can barely hear you. No. Say no, comma, I'm not. I'm not. You forgot the comma. What would you like to talk about? Well, I have a family uh, family problem. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's the trouble with families. There are always problems. Is this a low point in your life right now? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the problem, sweetheart? Okay, I had left my house, you know, this morning. Oh, you ran away this morning? Yes. Yeah. You're not married, are you? Oh, good. What was the argument that uh, compelled you to run away this morning? Well, yesterday uh -huh. evening, me and my sister had a fight. How old is your sister? Twenty. And what were you fighting about? Problems, you know, personal problems. Yeah, like what, though? So everybody can relate to it. Oh, you know, like money-wise. Oh, was she stealing money out of your tiny throbbing reticule? No. It's, you know, like, I, you know, like I lend her money and everything? Yes. And... You know, like a loan, and she was supposed to pay back, and she never does. Yeah, that's the way. How come, knowing that, how come you lent her the money? You know, like, um, I'm sweet, you know, I give it to her. Well, you know, now, now you've learned a lesson. Never trust a relative. Uh, and I had left, and plus, you know, family problem, you know, my other family. Yeah. You know, on my mom's side. Yeah. They were giving me, you know, hassles and everything, and so I left this morning, and I'm staying with my... My uncle and aunt. Oh, that's good. And I'm right now. I'm trying to get like general relief, you know, to help me out because I'm still going to school. Are you still in high school? Yes. Oh, when, you'll finish soon, I hope. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. And are your uncle and aunt making you feel welcome? They make me feel welcome. In. Oh, well, just stay right there for the next four or five years. Don't go back home. You've got it made, kid. Yeah, and never trust your never trust a relative. Never lend a relative money. Only a friend can become an enemy. A relative is one from the start. They're what I call biological faux pas. Yeah, they're like a dull ache in your heart all the time, relatives. So oh. if, if you've learned that as a young woman of 19, it's a lifelong lesson. If you've learned it at the age of 19, why, you are more than somewhat fortunate. What do you see yourself doing in 11 years when you'll be a little old lady of 30? Well, I, well, right now, you know, I can't picture it, but, you know, I have a feeling how it's going to turn out. What do you, how do you think it'll turn out? Well, it'll, it'll turn out pretty good, you know. Do you, do you plan to, uh, do you plan to, to become a professional something or other? Hopefully. Yeah. In what area? Maybe nursing? 
Oh. Maybe maybe genetic science, genetical en- genetic engineering, with robotic yes, uh, replicants. Uh, sure. You know, business woman. There you are. I'm going to send out my paroxysm for a business woman. Wait a minute here. You become a Phi Beta Kappa in double entry bookkeeping, and win the Nobel Prize for Creative Accounting in 11 years. How do you like that? Okay. And never marry, never marry a scoundrel unless he happens to be me. Okay. Okay. Thank you for calling, love. She was very sweet, and I do predict great things for her, as long as she remembers to avoid relatives. Well, we're all in a hurry, doing the world's work, surrounded by idlers, plug-uglies, and hooligans, and on the Balanced Talk Show, we learned how to cope with them in situations of utter copelessness. Bill Balance, if you absolutely do not know how to pronounce a word, say it very loudly. I mean, why compound ignorance with inaudibility? Let's find out from this caller, whose first name is... Anne. How old are you, Annie? Twenty-three. Have you ever said, you're through with men? And then what happened? I guess you could say that, yeah. Tell me about it, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, well, it's just, um, when I was 16, uh-huh. um, I, got, I was pregnant. <laughs> Did you know who the uh, daddy was? Yeah, yeah. Some, it was the only one there was. Some high school teacher? No. Some high school kid? College. With pimples akimbo? No, no, college. But anyhow, he refused to, you know, how they always do. They refuse to marry you or anything. You say, what, me? I couldn't possibly be the father of that child. Right. Sure. Right. Did I say it just right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, so, you know, I just, I guess I was going to play the good person, you know, and I didn't, um, we, I told my family and we didn't tell his family. Uh-oh. And we were going to be all nice and just let him get away with it. Uh-oh. So then I decided, just to, well, it was right after the baby was born. Yeah. That, um, you know, I should, why should he get away with this? <laughs> so I just, I went and told his parents. You did, and how did they react? Oh, uh, first, you know, to meet to my face, they were all goody goody. Uh-huh. And then, you know, they, they said they talked to him. Then I called him, and they talked to him. And then they said, you know, it wasn't his either. Yeah, he said, "Why? She's been uh, making it with every guy within a radius of ten miles." Right, right. Uh, are those your children in the background? Yes, and they're supposed to be upstairs playing. Have you no control over your kids? Yes, I do. <laughs> Is one of them the child of this rat? Yes. Uh, well, some of the rathood may have may have seeped on through. Right. Oh, no, that's my husband now. The other one's his. Oh, that's better. Right. Okay. But so, that, you know, I guess, I don't know, I never really thought, I guess, that guys were rats. I just, you know. Well, what happened? Did, I mean, oh, what happened? Oh, we just got in, in hassles all the time with his family. Well, wait. Did he marry you? No. Oh, okay. I wouldn't. So you had the child out of wedlock? Yes. Yeah. And who supported it? Your family? I did. You went, went to, to work. You you were a kid who went to work and supported your child. Yes, because I didn't want people saying, you know, I, pe- people always say that if a girl that's that young has, a, you know, a baby, yeah. that everybody else is going to take care of it. So I didn't want everybody saying that. So well, I went to work. What a spunky kid! I'm going to give you a yay. Are you ready? Okay. Yay! <laughs> oh, that's great. But you know. That's, I think, and then I really, I married a really great guy, uh-huh. and, you know, everything's just turned out really good, so I think people ought to know that it's not always, it doesn't t- always turn out bad and rotten. No, just usually. Right. No, yeah. no, no, not really. Well, I just, I want to protect you girls, and this is, what do you think of my suggesting that all young women should have their husbands to be carefully investigated and probed by some agency before they commit matrimony? I don't think you have to do it by an agency. Well, no matter what you call it, let's say... I guess so. No. Let, you just don't like the term agency. No, I guess not. Yeah, but nevertheless, I think that women, young women particularly, would be protected if they... and would be a lot better off, sweetheart, if they would only uh, allow their men to be investigated before they make some harebrained venture to the altar. Yeah, I think mm. that's a good idea. Okay. I think you could do it yourself. That's it. Right. Okay, sweetheart. Thank you for calling. Okay, bye-bye. Goodbye, Ann. Hello there. Bill Balance trying to cheer you up. Remember, through nighttime darkness, safely brought, restored to life, and happy thought. 
You know something I just figured out while thinking of that? Men need women far more than women need men. And I hope that impresses a caller whose first name is? Brooke. Age? 35. Brooke, you don't sound 35. Are you finding it more and more difficult not to sound 35? Yes, Bill, I'm working on it constantly. <laughs> <laughs> you do speech exercises. Yes, I do. And I, I work around um, the throat and the ear area to try to uh, sound better. Oh, your mouth is so tiny that I bet when you eat a jelly bean, you have to cram it in with a shoehorn. Oh, Bill, thank you. May I kiss those lips of unmockable suckableness? Well... I don't think you'd want to, Bill. I don't feel well today. Those wet and cushiony and receptive little lips at which strong men, namely me, sob aloud. What do you think you have? Well, I, that's, I really want to know, Bill. I, I wish it, you, my throat is so sore. Well, uh, have you gargled lately? Well, yes. Um, I use Dr. Tetchner's. You use what? Dr. Tetchner's. I don't know what that is, honey. Well, that's something that's very good for your throat. Well, open up, honey. I haven't made any diagnoses yet today, but I'll, I'll have a little check there. All okay. right, okay. O open up your mouth. Well, just a minute, please. I have to get the gauze off my throat. Just a moment. Yeah. All right. You have to get what off your throat? The gauze. Oh, the gauze? Yeah. I thought those were your wrinkles. I was thinking you've got a lot of crepe around your chin. No, no, that, that, that's gauze. Oh, Boy, I'm delighted. I thought you were braiding your wrinkles there. No, no. Well, open up your sweet mouth now. All right. Hmm. Your endemic opprobrium has been badly abraded, my dear. It hasn't. Due to, uh, keep your mouth open, due to prognosis of the pituitary and dilation of your autonomic paraplegia. However, your life signs are wavering encouragingly. Well... Now, wait a minute. Keep your mouth... Keep. I'm going to have to <coughs> pry it open here with this... Little thing down there, a little further. You're not getting to the point. Oh, uh, listen. Just give me time, my dear. You don't want a quack diagnosis, do you? Certainly don't. Okay. And, okay. Keep your mouth open now. All right. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Luckily, I happen to be a specialist in this field. The systolic pressure of your peptic agenda is within the normal range of vacillation, my dear. <laughs> Now stop simpering. Keep your mouth open. I'm sorry, doctor. I just broke your little stick. Would you get a new one? I don't like that dirty one you were using. Well, it was. I swabbed it off on on the on my jacket here. Wait a minute. I'll get you. Wait a minute. This one. Another one. Let me lift this one out of the ashtray here. Okay. Now let me hold on your tongue. You mean you smoke? No, I just picked it out of the ashtray here. Okay. Now what you've got? Medicine. Sweetheart. Uh huh. Are you going to let me finish my diagnosis, or are you going to keep gabbling? No, I'm not. Go I don't gabble. All right. Open up now. Okay. Uh huh. Hmm. What you've got to do is avoid attrition of the ancillary nerve, and your pubescent pulsations will increase in direct proportion to the pulverization of your otherwise healthy panacea. Okay, now you can close your mouth. Mm -hmm. What you have is bubonic plague. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm sorry. Terminal? Uh, only semi-terminal. You got to me in the very nick of time. Now, hold still. There. That's that little wooden thing, right? No, no. That's my love ray laser. Oh. Now, will you hold still? I just keep wiggling when I talk to you, Bill. So do I, my dear. You keep slipping out of focus. Oh. Now, tell me about the time you said you were through with men. Well, I was involved with an artist. An artist? Did he paint seascapes or portraits or landscapes or what? Well... He was in the professional field. Yeah? Well, aren't those other people professionals? I just... Yes, but in, you know, they're all in different areas. Oh. And, um... You mean he painted houses? No, no. No, no. Okay. Uh, he really didn't paint. Oh, he, he, he carried a palette around and people wondered about it. He, no, he carried a verbal palette around. He carried a what? Verbal. Oh, he was a big talker. No, he was also, um... Talented in many fields. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Which, and, uh, but painting was not one of them. That's correct. Oh, uh -huh. okay. He talked a good paint job. Yes, he did. All right. He still does. Uh -huh. And um, he's all talk and no action. Bill, I'm talking about you. Come on, I've never said I'm a painter. You didn't even recognize my voice. Oh, well, what am I supposed to say? I don't know who you are. Yeah. Well, okay. Huh? How am I supposed to know who you are? 
I thought you had one of those memories. I have, but I stop playing games. Who are you, sweetheart? Well, no, I I've, I've played my game. Hmm. Well, I don't know who you are. Okay. Am I spa? Did we ever have a romance? No, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah. Gee, well, I I don't know who you are, sweetheart. Uh, but I'm certainly willing to, you know, to uh, to uh, somehow make amends. <laughs> but I've never told anybody that I'm a painter. What are you talking about? I meant with words, Jill. Hmm? I meant with words. Oh. Well, I don't know what you're getting at. You can go ahead. I have no secrets from my listeners. Go right ahead. No, uh, no. No, no. I want to keep it a secret. Have we Have we ever met one another, Brooke? Yes, we have. Hmm. Uh, what sort of a meeting was it? Was it romantic? No. Gee, well, I don't know who it is, but you know it's fascinating. But the only people who are interested or amused are are you and me. Right. You know, so I guess I'll just have to say that uh, that uh, your loss is my gain, or something like that. Well, no, mm. no, I think we'll put it the other way, Bill. Hmm. Well, you can always plug into my life. I'm here every day, sweetheart. I plugged in one afternoon. <laughs> Okay, Jill, thank you. You're mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, I don't know who that is. You know, whew. women who want to play games. I happen to be a proud living sacrifice to the great god Whoopi. And once heard of my exertion, what you do is break into the charmed circle of human communication, keeping in mind that when a woman is totally touchable, huggable, kissable, Twenty-four hours a day, when she never shrugs her man away, saying, You know, must my hair, dear? Or, Don't bother me now, I'm cooking. Or, Charlie, leave me alone for a change. Well, when that woman permits total touchability any time, twenty-four hours a day, her man will never, ever leave her, and will never even glance at another woman more than just for a few seconds, of course. But when that woman turns disdainfully away, with resentment and with distaste in her voice and on her face, she does so at her own peril, for that rejected man will soon look elsewhere for someone more receptive to his advances and his yearning for loving tactility. Hi, Bill Balance. So many people have asked me this. I think I might as well answer now. They say, Bill, comma, what's the hardest part of being a talk show host? Well, I'll tell you the most difficult part is pretending to listen. Unless, of course, the caller happens to be checking in under the name of... Dara. D-A-R-A. That's right. Dara. How old are you, Dara? I'm 23. Dara, honey... What happened the time you said you were through with men forever? Well, Bill, I kind of grew up fast when I was young. <laughs> huh. And uh, to make a long story short, I was married at 16, uh, pregnant at 17, a widow at 18, married again at 19, and divorced at 20. <laughs> well, what did you do the last three years for fun? Pardon? What happened the past three years? Well, um got myself a job and I have two kids oh. and and my whole thought was my kids sure and uh, so I started working and I met my husband now and he he's well I'm 23 and he is 38 and I guess after meeting him realized that I really needed a man a grown-up man instead of a boy yeah and uh, I've huh? had a fabulous marriage ever since it's, yeah one second one one question, honey. How does he treat your children? Uh, well, his his type of philosophy is yeah. give them discipline first, and then give them love. You know, in other words, have them respect you first. You know, if they need discipline, discipline, and then turn around and love them. You know. Balance's law of raising children has it that the best parent is the one who makes himself uh, increasingly or progressively unnecessary. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. How old are your kids? Um, my daughter is five, and the little one is three. Little boy or girl? Uh, it's a boy. And do they, how, do they, how do they respond to him? There? Great. They really do. Uh, they think he's fabulous. 
Well, you finally uh, you finally checked in with the right kind of stud then, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. It's like my second marriage. Him, you know, I was married for almost exactly a year. And oh. in that year's time, he had 13 jobs. 13 jobs in one year? <laughs> Boy, a paragon of uh, erraticism. Yeah, and when I was nine months pregnant with my little one, he didn't even have the $50 for me to go into the hospital. And this is when I realized that's it. How did you happen to hook up with such an obvious loser? Well, I guess it was mostly because of my first husband when he got killed. Yeah. I was, uh, it was such a shock to me, you know, and... And then I guess I was just looking for someone to comfort me. You were vulnerable. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, even then, like, you know, I got the money from the government. It was, I think, $10,000. Yeah. And he almost blew all of it. Naturally. Really. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I never again, how stupid. And I've really learned since then, and I think it has helped me with uh, my marriage now. And you're still a young woman. Yeah. Why, wow, you've, got, you've got 60 years ahead of you. Yeah, that's true. So you learned very early in life, didn't you? I sure did, and I kind of, I'm grateful for it. I really am. That's the only way to look at it, sweetheart. And yeah, I think if I would have looked at any other way, I'd have been gone by now. Absolutely. You've survived, and you're going to keep on surviving and be happy. Yeah, well, I look at what I've gone through. Nothing could be any worse than that. Yeah, but now look how cheerful you are. Yeah, I really am. I look towards each day as a new experience now. Yeah, life is a series of experiences. Tell me, how did you happen to meet the 38-year-old? Well, um, I used to, I was a waitress, yeah. and I was working from midnight till late in the morning. Yeah. And uh, he walked in, and he said, I was working the counter, and he sat down at the counter, and he must have sat there and drank coffee for about an hour. Couldn't take his eyes off you. <laughs> and he kept uh, watching me. Sure. He kept staring at me. Yeah. And he scared me at first because he reminded me of a hood. I mean, at 8 o'clock in the morning, he was wearing a trench coat, and it wasn't really cold out. Yeah. He was wearing sunglasses. Oh. And, uh, and, you know, he just kind of reminded me of a gangster. <laughs> yeah, and when he when he whipped out his forty five, you knew something was wrong. <laughs> and then we started talking, and he asked me to go out for breakfast, and, and then we started... Uh, you mean you went out away from that same restaurant? You went to another restaurant? <laughs> yeah, you said you didn't recommend the food in the place where you worked. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> And then it was love. Well, still, even then, even when I started uh, dating him, mm -hmm. I still had a negative attitude. I, like, I think it was the second time. I mean, he's had a lot of experience with women. Uh -huh. you know, later on, I found this out. And uh, the second time he went out with me, he told me he loved me. Uh. I turned to him and I said, hey, don't ever tell me you love me until you really mean it. Ah. Uh, you know, I was still had this negative... Uh, wasn't negative, honey. You were just being realistic. I said, you know, hopping from one love affair to another, why, they'd be a lot happier. I think this is one thing that kept him interested in me, too, because he figured the first time he went out with me, he was going to get me in the rack, and I told him, hey, no way. <laughs> and so, I don't know, I guess because of that, he respected me. Yeah, and he was also, it was a challenge. Yeah, right. Are you really happy now? Oh, yes. May I lay upon you Balance's law, of Balance's nuptial law? You sure can. Marriage simplifies life, but complicates living. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, honey, thank you for calling. Uh-huh. Goodbye, darling. Bill. What a sweetheart. Bill Balance with a burst of insight. If you have opened the door to your inner self and found nobody home, you better place a hasty call to me, as I just may send you my new book, A Day in the Life of a Wino, or Will You Love Me in Oaxaca as You Did in Cuernavaca. Now to a caller whose first name is... Debbie. How old are you, Deb? I'm 21. Well, sweetheart... Have you ever said you're through with men, and what happened? Oh, well, once and a half. Once and a half? Yeah. <laughs> Are you now involved in the half part? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, sweetheart. Well, okay, the first time uh, I was going out with uh, a man named Charlie. <laughs> okay. Dud. Uh, wait, did you say a dud or a stud? A big dud. <laughs> he was a dud stud. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I had a son from him. Mm. Did Charlie know about it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He were knows you... about it, but he doesn't want to admit it. Were you, you were not married to him, in other words. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, he, had, he doesn't want to admit any responsibilities. Naturally. So uh, that's been about, oh, two years ago. Uh -huh. So uh, at the time that I was pregnant, I was about three months, and uh, the guy that lives across the street from me, he's lived there for about ten years. Yeah. <laughs> 
we uh, started going out, and uh, the first night well, we went wait, out. Well, wait, wait, wait. How did he? How did you and this guy across the street get acquainted? Uh, well, I lived right across the street from him for ten years. I know, I, but nevertheless, how did you get acquainted? I was good friends with his sister. Ah, okay. And, uh, we just knew each other, you know, just uh -huh. to say hi. And pretty soon. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, so we started going out, and uh, I told him the first night that we went out that I was, you know, I was going to have a baby, and. Uh, he said, well, that's all right. So anyway, we uh, decided to move in together. Oh, uh, yeah, and share each other. Yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, it turned out that he was a rat, too. <laughs> in what way did his, did his rodent hood come forth? Oh, well, uh, he wanted to, uh, to stay, you know, living together, but he didn't want to. Uh, he was upset about the fact that I was going to have a baby and it wasn't his. Well, what, you told him about it. Oh, yeah, but it, after I started getting fat, uh, that's when he really noticed it. <laughs> he wasn't ah. happy about it. Oh, what a child. <laughs> but, uh... What did he contribute financially? Oh, and, yeah. He, uh, he paid the rent and uh, all that good stuff. But, yeah. uh... He, um... Started lying a lot about where he was at night and why he didn't come home and... You knew somehow he was... He was playing around. Oh, I know he was. One of them called me. One of his escapades called me on the phone and, uh... One of his escapades? Yes. One of his amatory escapades. What did she say? Is Charlie there? No, no. This one's name is Tony. Is Tony around tonight? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And uh, she practically uh, threatened to kill me, I guess. She wasn't very happy at all that uh, I had taken Tony away from her. Uh -huh. And, uh... Did you say, you can have him back? <laughs> yeah, really. I was really getting fed up because this was the second time around that I uh, was getting burned. Yeah. Uh, well, are you still involved with uh, Tormented Tony? Oh, yes. We, uh, that's, it's uh, sort of a half. First yeah. one was Charlie. That was a whole a yeah. whole dud. The Tony's your secret torment. Pardon? Oh, yes. Yes, he is. He's just, um, he's sort of a halfway halfway dead. I'm he, ready to... Uh, he's a half-wit dud. Yes, yeah, I'm sort of ready to tell him where to get off to. Well, have you had the baby yet? Oh, yes. he's uh, He'll be 17 months. Well, how does, uh, how does Tony uh, treat him? Oh, he loves the baby. He really does. I mean, I have to give him credit that much. And he treats the baby better than he does you. Oh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Huh? That's what upsets me, I think. At least it's not all a loss, then. If he were if he were mean or cruel to the baby, then that would be the end. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I guess it's uh, things have worked out pretty good, but... Uh... Oh, not nearly as good as they should, sweetheart. Don't just assume that this is the way it's going to be, you know. If my show does nothing else, I wanted to reveal to you young women that uh, life can be a lot better. It doesn't have to be like this. Oh, it, 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 I know that. It's, mm. uh, in a way, I've been uh. kind of seeing somebody else now. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's find out about that. Oh, I can't mention any names. Oh, that's okay. We'll just say, uh, well, let's call him, uh, let's call him Irving. Okay, Irving. Yes. All right, where did you meet Irv? Oh, I've known him since high school. Ah, were you lovers in high school? Um, not really. We went together once in the seventh grade. Sort of, <laughs> kind of fumbling around. Yes. Well, know. where do you go? And you're, I suppose you meet him wearing a blazing fuchsia tweed pinafore. <laughs> where do you go to meet him? Oh, around the corner or uh, any place that isn't obvious to the public eye. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Maybe it's... out in your garage. Yes, yes. That's. That's a good thing. And Tony doesn't have any idea that Irving is hanging around the uh, the fringes. No. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you're getting back at Tony and having a little fun beside. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's sort of a, uh, a subconscious revenge or something Wife. for the way he treated me, so, you know. You're lashing back at Tony. Absolutely, honey. Oh, yes. I don't know. It's, uh, things work out for a while and then he uh, gets back into his old ways. Yeah, his, uh... His his cravings yes. uh, get get the best of him. Yes. Well, you can you can uh, continue to have chuckles on the side with Irving, but don't get caught. Otherwise, he will come on all he will come on all self righteous and say, "How come you've been playing around, gee whiz?" Yes, I know. He's uh, pulled that already. Oh, oh, that louse! I don't like him already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, sweetheart. Thank you so much for calling. Okay. Bye, Deb. Bye, bye. <laughs> Oh, uh, the Bill Balance Show, my daily alternative to catastrophe. And remember, the balance law. Now, man always falls in love with a woman who asks the kind of questions he can answer. Bill Balance Talk Show.
a delicate seismograph of our age, sensitive to every public tremor, every private quake. It is communicative discipline and focused awareness carried to the point of lilting lunacy, and I hope that that impresses this caller who claims to be. Gloria. How old are you? Thirty-nine. Well, Glow, ever said you're through with men? Yes, I have. I'm just barely getting over saying it. <laughs> Tell me how come you said it and what's happening to you right now. Be- uh, because I think basically all men are cheaters, oh. but uh, I think that uh, it takes a woman to cheat with them, so that is just starting to penetrate. I want to remind you of one one immutable fact, Gloria, which I think, which I hope you'll agree with, but of course it's not compulsory, and that is that uh, uh, no woman will be stolen away from a guy, and no guy will be stolen away from a woman uh, unless he or she wants to be stolen away. Right, I agree with that, but yeah. that doesn't mean that a man or a woman will not. Uh, cheat, that just means they won't leave home. Oh. Very... Right? I mean, that that's my point. I yeah. think that they will cheat, but they don't want to leave their house. Are you talking about your own cheating or his cheating? I'm talking about his cheating in my case, but uh, in every, about every marriage I know. Yeah. Or two, one or both of the, of the people are cheating. Yeah. Well, tell me about it in your particular case, my dear. In my particular case, yeah. uh... The girls just happen to have a big mouth and like to call them miserable, you know. That was, uh, or, uh, well, I, let me put it this way. That I think that what, what a man should do is, or a person, if they're having an affair, should be more, uh, should have a little discretion. Well, now, let, never mind your philosophy. I want to find out about you yourself and what's been happening. My husband had an affair with a girl about uh, three and a half years ago. I don't know how many others, but this one... Uh, happened to be to work in his office so she kept calling me you know and telling me all about it she would tell you every yes yes she would tell me what they did on weekends and where they went and what did she tell you at your request or was she just no i wasn't uh she was rubbing it in oh yes yes she i think she wanted me to kick him out so she could nail him full time sure Boy, how did you respond to her crank calls? Well, I think I faked it like it, like it wasn't bothering me, but it did bother me a great deal. Huh. Yeah, I can imagine. So what was the outcome? He's still here. Yeah, but you... uh I don't see her anymore. I mean, he's, he's still home. You've anticipated my next question. Who do you think he's out with right now? Uh, it probably, uh, if he's in the mood, whoever it happens to be, you know, I don't think he's very picky anymore. Have you ever said, don't bring home any dread disease? Oh, well, no, uh-uh, I don't, uh, I don't, no, uh-uh. Boy, you certainly are resigned to his infidelities, aren't you, Gloria? Well, I think that, uh, yes, I think so, I think I am. Yeah, how strange. It's really very, uh... Usually the only time a woman accepts a man's fidelities is when she's having a little fun herself. No, but I'm looking. Ah, uh, I thought so. <laughs> uh, where are you looking these days? Where does a woman of 39 look for action? Yeah, I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> but you know, I've had more I've had more action without leaving the house in the past... Um, are you talking about door-to-door studs? Oh, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm talking about people that I've known for years are just coming out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's... And they call you up and say, Hi, Gloria, how you how you doing, kid? Shall we get together and have a little drink and something? Oh, and, yeah, and, and which, what, three and a half years ago, when I was desperate for somebody to call me, no one called. Of course. Certainly, yeah. That's the way it always is, honey. I know, I... Yeah. What are you, are you smoking? No. Are you eating something? I'm, pardon me? What are you doing with your sweet mouth? Not a thing. Come on now, you're gnawing on something. No, I'm not. I'm not. Well, your your mouths are your mouth is working spasmodically. <laughs> Maybe my mouth is working with my hands. Have you ever seen out at the track seen a mare standing there nibbling her own lips? No. That's what you're doing. You're nibbling. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that at all. Well, may I nibble your lips? Sure, if you want. Let me have that upper one there. Oh, wait a minute. No, it has some hair on. No, it doesn't. Uh, well, just a little. Just Not even a little. A few little wisps of whiskers there. No. Let me have that lower lip anyway. It's a little cleaner. Hmm? That's the paintbrush I have in my hand. Is that what it is? Hold out your lower... How low- old are you anyway? Hmm? How old are you? I'm immortal. You are? Of course, my dear. Oh, that's great. 
The world is going through menopause, but I'm maintaining my youth. Well, good. That's when? good. I'm real happy for well, you. What about your lower lip? Hold it out here. My lower one? I thought you had my upper. Well, I changed my mind hastily. I got a good look at it. Let me have that lower lip. Hmm. I'm going to kiss you from ear to ear. Oh, I'm probably too old for you. Thirty-nine's not too old if you're... You never have ask for any old people to call. You know, you're all, you always get these young girls. Always. Gee, you what? really like those young ones, don't you? You're nagging, Bill. After all, we've been through together today. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't had a crack of that lower lip, which looks so enticing. Are you ready? Whenever you are. Keep it, keep it out there, honey. You keep withdrawing it. It's out. You keep slurping it away from me. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, that was neat. It sure was, wasn't it? Well, have you been sipping uh, some uh, espresso celery tonic to ease your tormented trachea? No, I haven't. Boy, your mouth tastes very... Well, have you had a foaming tankard of ale lately? No, I haven't. Well, it tastes awfully good anyway. (laughs) And I think I love you. And you know, Gloria? Uh Huh? Uh... I want you to announce on the air right now a general area where a woman can go who is 39 to pick up new loves because you tell me that it's strictly guys calling you from years past. But I don't quite believe that, sweetheart. See? You want me to announce it on the air? Yeah, don't tell me the it exact... to me when I, if, I, if I knew of such a place... No, you, I, I'm not the village idiot. No, no, I'll tell you why I'm asking you this because so many women write me Right. Ask, asking me, and they're in their late 30s and early 40s, see, and so if you can help them, why, well, it would be a great public service. I don't, I don't really, Do no, you, you'll have to tell me, I don't have any. I don't have any idea, I don't go around picking up people. Well, I don't either. Well, but you just told me that you've got your eye on a couple. My eye is open, they will always be open from now on, but that doesn't uh, mean I'm out looking. Uh, I'm not sitting in a bar, if that's what you're implying. <laughs> Well, are you saying that with a little smile, or are you getting angry at Bill, who loves you? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm saying it with a little smile. And I hope somebody does call in and tell you where to meet someone, because I'd like to know myself. Well, I don't want to know, but I want to know for you girls. You I see. think that's, you're, you're right. Yeah, well, because, you know, I want to keep in jet step with the space age. Oh, there is one thing, one point I'd like to, add, or thing I'd like to ask you. Uh, you. You think there should be an agency to check on women, on men. What about women? Well, why don't you start that agency? I d- I'm just trying to protect my women friends, you see, from all these losers they're constantly getting hung up with. Yeah, that's why you're not married. <laughs> I was married twice. I know you were, but that's why you're not married anymore. Because you mean they checked up on me and discovered what a rat I was? No, because you haven't done much checking either. <laughs> Well, that's why I want to, for the remainder, for the remaining uh, 72 years of my life on this planet, that's why I want to protect other human beings, you see? Well, I think we should protect the men, too. Well, what a nice thing for you to say, Gloria. Oh, I do, definitely. You said that because I gave you such a magnificent kiss. That was it. Yeah, I think you, uh, you're you rich. You sound like a tootsie with a great big roll. <laughs> and thanks for calling. Yeah, one. Okay. Goodbye, honey. Bye. <laughs> She was very cute. She wanted. To, she was trying to maneuver me into a position of uh, suggesting unleashed profligacy, but it's not that at all. Bill Balance here to pollinate your mental toadstools, emphasizing that a man is young as long as he can repeat his emotions. A woman is young as long as she can inspire those emotions. Hope that impresses this scholar, whose first name is... Mindy. Lindy or Cindy? Mindy, M. Oh, Mindy. Huh? Mindy, how old are you? Eighteen. Sweetheart, tell me, have you ever said you're through with men or boys? Uh, yes, about fifteen times. <laughs> what makes you, uh, what makes you, uh, decide that, and then what makes you well, con- counteract your decision? Okay. First yeah. of all, I'm married. Oh. I've been, um, let's see, two years ago, yeah. my husband and my brother were going out, and I was going to go with them, and then we got, my husband and I got in an argument. Over what? Over his drinking. He likes to get drunk. Yeah. So we, uh, I decided not to go, and he and my brother went. They went out and got drunk and proceeded to spend the night at a friend's house. And he called me the next day and told me, you know, he was at this friend's house. So male or female friend? Uh, male. Yeah, okay. 
Anyway, two weeks later, I talked to his friend's girlfriend, and my husband had been going over to this friend's house quite a bit during the week. And I asked him if I could go with him one day, and he said, no, you know, there's nothing going on over there. You know, we'll just be gone a little while. Oh, yeah. Right. So yeah. I found out from this girlfriend, this guy's girlfriend, that there were three girls living there. And... <laughs> Oh, your little heart just uh, turned over in your chest, didn't it? Oh, well, that wasn't the first time, but, you know, I was oh. awful mad. Uh -huh. So, that's what happened. So you said, no more men for me, you said yeah, to yourself. Right. <laughs> okay, and then what happened? And that was it. Then, you know, I just... How long, how long a pause was there before you latched onto another guy? Uh, there, uh, I'm still with the same guy. You mean you survived the emotional yeah. backlash? Yes. And is he still pulling the same jazz on you? No, not recently. He oh. hasn't even been getting drunk. Boy, you sobered him up. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe he suddenly matured and has developed a sense of responsibility. I don't know. I, and, maybe. I have a baby, too, so... By know, him? He's had plenty of time. Is it by him? Yes. Well, maybe he's calmed down. Maybe that was just a part of growing up. Maybe. Well... I don't know. Listen, I'm not going to bore you with tales of my tormented toddlerhood... You know, uh, that is when I was your age. But it sort of seems to me that that uh, all guys have to go through that. Uh, well, he's 24, and he's been through, you know. Well, it's about time he's smoothing out a little. Right. That's what I say. Yeah. Uh, what's his first name? Russell. Russell? Mm hmm I've never known a guy named Russell who wasn't a rotten clod. Really? Yeah. He's the only Russell I know, and he's got to be the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last one I want to know. Yeah, well, don't tell him I said that. I won't. He's asleep. He won't. But if his, uh, he's what? He's asleep. <clears throat> How come he's asleep? Because he works nights. Well, that's okay then. Yeah. Boy, are you sure he has a job nights? He's not playing around? Oh, I, yeah, I hope he does. Oh, he's probably playing around with the girls at work. That doesn't seem to worry you. No. That's all right, because I'm going to start school, and I'm sure I'll need some, you know. Ah, uh, there we are. Any time, it's now it's forming itself up into a mm -hmm. into an inexorable but balanced law. Any time I find one of my girls saying, oh, I don't care if he plays around, it's because she is either playing around herself or she's getting ready to. Mm, well, maybe. I'm going to be a nurse. <clears throat> a nurse? Mm -hmm. You're going to become an RN? No, a LVN. Why don't you become an RN? Well, the, I might be, but you have to go to, uh, you have to have chemistry and you have to take all these other subjects before you can be an RN, so. Well, I want you to become an, an RN after you become an LVN. But I'm planning on doing Will you really do that? Yeah. And then you can take my temperature sometime. Oh, good. With an oral thermometer. <laughs> okay? Okay. Thank you, honey. Okay. Bye. Bye. What a dear kid. Mindy. The Bill Balance Show.